Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I'm excited to share some new crafting tools from Waffle Flower Crafts. If you're in the market for tools, stick around. I think you will enjoy what I'm about to share. Plus, I've got a really cute card project using some of the new Waffle Flower Crafts tools. Stick around. That card project and those tools are coming up next. So here's a look at the brand new Waffle Flower blending brushes. And the thing that is so great about the brushes, well, number one, they're gonna be great quality. These are fabulous brushes. I'm gonna open these up and show you. But I think the thing that is so fun are the colors. Rainbow order, but they're sort of in a pastel tone. Actually, let's flip it this way. So then we're going from red, orange, yellow, green, the teal, green, blue, purple, pink. Oh, so great. And let's see, pop them out. So you've got your little waffle flower logo there and soft white packed bristles, right? Oh, they're so cute. So I'm going to take these out. I know that there are those of you out there that love the softer pastel tones, right? And I have, I have a lot of blending brushes and this is a new addition to my collection, but I have to show you this because I think this is so clever. This is the Waffle Flower Acrylic Holder. And you put it together yourself, right? It's acrylic. And it took me a while to realize that you had to take the, uh, oh, look, you can see my windows. You have to take the plastic off. So if you get this and you're like, oh, why is it so dull? Well, <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out. But then your brushes go right inside here. And if you had a beautiful shelf, right, just waiting for your brushes or just on your little crafty space here, they all fit right into this container. And I love the look of the clear acrylic because it kind of feels like it's floating. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I love it. So that's a look at the brushes. But wait, there's more. What if you're more of a cute bucket style person for your brushes? Oh my gosh, they're kind of rubbery. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. They're not like a plasticky acrylic. They're kind of like a silicone, right? Put a few in the cool tones like that. Okay. And that is a whole different look for your brushes. Let me, let me tilt it on its side here. So you have soft holders for the brushes. I also wanted to show you the smart design here on this. If you have the uh, water media mat that has the little wells, this can just wedge right in there, right? So you have, you know, that and you can have a couple of the brushes that you're using. Like, let's say you're, you know what I mean? And if you have more, you can just stack them together, right? And maybe this is just, you know, well, I'm gonna slide this right here so you can see it. Oh, I guess I could slide my whole table. Then, you know, you could have some of your, you know, most used supplies, like, you know, your crystal katana, a paintbrush, you know, whatever, whatever tools you like to keep right handy as you're using your, your media mat. Isn't that fun? But wait, there's more. Introducing the Waffle Flower Stencil Mat and Mini Stencil Mat. So what are these? Well... <laughs> I don't know how many of you have the water media mat, but this is a new mat from Waffle Flower designed to have a corner, right? That you can press all of your paper or your stencil into. And of course, it's gonna be safe for all of the mediums that you might be stenciling with, depending on what you're using. So this is the mini, and then this is the large. And actually, I think today, Let's get this out. I might use the large for playing around and having some fun. All right. So you can see this is much bigger. It could accommodate all sorts of sizes of paper and stencils. And then you would even have, you know, a little area off to the side if you were doing some mixing of elements. But I think the thing that's 
kind of cool is you push into the corner to hold your stencil in the same place every time. And I'm just gonna jump in and start playing with a few stencils and the new brushes and see what shakes out. So for my purposes today though, I'm just gonna keep them in this little soft side. Then I have them right in front of me and they can all fit in. And I'm going to grab, I guess I'll do the light minty colored one to go with this pale blue. I have this pine tree stencil from Waffle Flower that I have some ideas and we're gonna see what shakes out. For right now, I am not going to use the negatives, but it does come with negatives. And that's kind of cool. I have a piece of cardstock here. This is already trimmed to be six by six and I've just kind of shoved it into the corner. And actually I'm gonna line this up because rather than mask off the edges, sometimes I like to keep all my stencil together. And then what I'm going to do is create a background, sort of a tree scheme landscape, scenescape, using these trees. But what I think I will start with is I actually want to start with one big tree in the center. So I'm gonna just move my mat like this, kind of position this in the center, right? Well, actually, maybe I'll put that in the center and then just have my paper be maybe right, right there. I'll mask this way and I think I'm going to do some taping off. And that way you isolate what needs to be isolated. And I can reuse all of these tapes. Let's get started. Now the thing I think that's kind of fun, and I'm starting with, this is Simon Says Stamp Seafoam Ink. Also, I have a feeling that this will kind of grip my pad. Oh yeah, it actually kind of does. All right. Oh, let's load this up. First time. And actually, you know what? I think I'm actually gonna pull I think I'm gonna pull in that because that's really gonna grip. Oh yeah, okay. Loading this up and then I'm gonna just tap off here. Maybe I'll tap off on the mat because this can be washed, right? We'll load it up a little more. First time using a brush, you gotta, you gotta give it some love, get that conditioned. And all I'm gonna do here, hold this in place to mask this off and I'm gonna create a light tree in the sea foam because what I'm creating here is going to be a treescape of trees. And when you do your lighter ones, is that what it is? The lighter ones in the background appear more in the distant and then the darker ones appear to be in the foreground or something like that. It's called perspective. It's a fantastic concept. Right, so we just want to start with one light tree. Tree one, done, as we lift that off. So I have one pretty tree in the middle. Another tree over here. I'm going to grab the next color in this series. This is called Surf. Bring in Surf. This is just going to be for blues anyway, blue dye ink specifically. Tap a little there, load that up. Okay, and we will go over this one. Well, I wanna hold that in place, but I don't wanna cast a shadow on what I'm doing, so let's try this. Coming on this side first. Like that, oh good, I can see that coming in nicely. Okay. And I guess the nice thing about the mat is everything feels pretty grippy. And we like grippy, right, grippy. Grippy is good. Look at how fast that color goes down. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, okay. Like that. Oh yeah, it is true. One is more in the background. Over here, like that. All right. So the tape grips nicely to the surface as well. Now on this guy, I guess I'll go like that, but I don't know. I, I probably don't need to mask that off because I think as long as I keep my hand in place and just remember where I am, I think we'll be fine. Okay, so we're coming in here with this same color for this tree. Like that. Now you could be more blendy too if you wanted, you know, have it be darker at the base. I just wanted to create differentiation between the trees, right? I'm not really too concerned about having a 
a deeper blend at the base, but maybe, maybe on this one I will. Oh, it's so pretty though. Look at that. Love blue trees. Do they exist in reality? No. Do we work on creating our own reality? Of course we do. That is the beauty of stamping. I think I want to not do that one because I just did that one. I think I want to do this and we're going to come down just a little more, right? And we are going to tape. Well, I guess we'll go over here again just to protect the edges. And for this last tree, I'm going to come in with the darkest shade that I have, which is the Simon Says Stamp Ocean. And get this mask ready to go again. But yeah, everything's just sort of holding in place nicely, even though I do have a, like that's, that's barely even taped down. But, oh, see that one's much darker, right? Here we go. Okay, let's make sure we're not going off the edge. And this will be our darkest tree, which will get the most attention on the card. Like that. Okay, and that's how it works with perspective. Dark comes to the foreground. All right, got a little, got a little whoop de doo on there. All right, let's see what that looks like. Lifting this up, and now see my trees. I probably should have done a more shaded one in the background. Actually, do I want to have one more tree? You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't suck. It wouldn't hurt to have one more. What if I did one more tall one right here? So we also had another foreground tree. I like that. And blend. Like that. It's so pretty. I could even go with a slightly lighter hand on this, right? Just slightly, because it will definitely stand out. So maybe I will just do it lightly. Like that. A little darker at the bottom. And voila, we have trees. Now I am going to be cutting this panel down, right? But I have an idea. Let me pause and go wipe this stencil down. So I did decide that I want to take a gray. And the only pale gray that I have handy is Misty Coast because I am going to do just a little bit to ground the trees, right? I think I'm going to make a card that's vertical. Again, haven't decided. And I, I will decide. I love I do love creating on the fly like this. I used to not. I used to always plan out my videos, but I think it's more fun to just explore the creative process while you're going. And here, all I'm going to do, do I want to go up or down? This is what I'm not sure. Do you go down or do you go like, oh, I think, mm, which way do you go? Now I'm all confused. I'm like, does it go this way when you're making a hill? Yes, it does, because that's going to be blending up, right? All right, let's just hold that in place. And I just wanted to add a little gray right on the edge, because what will that do? It'll make it seem like it's a hill. And it's going to be very light, right? I'm not doing much here. Just enough to create the suggestion. Well, it's going to seem like dirty snow. <laughs> I think that's okay, right? I think that's okay. We don't mind a little dirty snow. And if I need to line this back up, oh, that's so much better, right? And then you take one more to do the grounding for, well, let's go that way again. No, no, I do want to flip it because if I flip it, then I can come up like, well, no, I got to I got to keep it in kind of the same kind of the same thing here cuz I want it to also extend up to that tree. Up to that tree base like that maybe? No. We'll, we'll figure it out. There we go. There we go. I think that's what I want right there. All right, let's try that. That way you get a little depth behind. Just a little Kind of put my thumb there so that I know. I'll kind of come up over there too. Like that. It's kind of cool. It's 
stencils are just cool. They're just, you know, there's just a lot going on these days with stencils. Look at that. I'm kind of geeked. All right, I have another idea that I think is going to work, and we're going to have to see if it does. So I have this Snowfall background stencil, and I thought, well, we'll see here what's going to happen. I thought it would be cool to add a little bit of Snowfall to this, but we're going to do it with a pigment ink. So I'm going to mix and match a little here with my inks. I think I will just, you know, just tape that there, and we're going to see what happens with pigment ink. But I have learned something from, well, my my friends on the YouTube. I'm not going to pick up and touch my pad because that's how I messed up one of my Gina K pads before. Instead, I'm going to grab my ink off here once I get the initial load in. Does that make sense? That's going to be my extra. So I'm taking the load in. I call this the load in. I'm really getting that on there, right? And then we'll just, you know, we're just going to come in here and just add some throughout the stencil. I don't even know how much it'll show up, right? But I, I just thought some little flakes, dots falling over the trees could be kind of cute. And a, and a big whoop. Just simple. Just simple. You know what else would have been cute with this? Uh, to dry emboss this whole thing. Oh, I should have done that first, right? Run the stencil through um, a die cut machine. But I think we're just gonna get the suggestion of snow. Should we should we lift it up and see if it's if it's good? Let's lift it up. Oh, I'm so nervous. <gasps> Ooh, little dots, little bokeh snow. How about we get a little more here on this one? Right, just kind of push that in like that. I like that more in the middle like that. That's kind of cool. Let's lift it up. I think that's really fun. Just that little added texture. So here's what I did, and I'm not sure. I'm going to be cutting this down as well, but I thought it would be kind of cute to have this, well, I can't get it lined up now, this really delicate Merry Christmas, right? have that cut. I've got an extra die cut here that I have to pop out to give it some dimension, but I thought this would look really cool popped up on the front of this card. So let me grab some more tools, get my mat out of the way, and well, we'll die cut this panel. I'm going to glue my greetings together here with a little spray glue. I'll put both of them in a little box off camera and spray. I'm going to stack these right here on the base. Sometimes with these really delicate greetings, I just find it easier to, oh, it's sticking there, get off there, to stack them here on the base. And that way, oh, did I get enough liquid glue on there? I think I'm close. All right. Press that down. It's very sticky. See, now I can just stack these, I think, a little easier. Like if I start over here. Oh, get off there. You're so delicate. So sticky. My tweezers are very sticky. You could use a clean. Get that lined up there. Work that in. And that way we get ever so slight dimension. All right, let's just... All right, and then I'll press down on that, really adhere that tiny bit for the dot on the eye. Right there. Little, little. And then I will pick up this guy, pop it right there. Boop. Did it go? I <laughs> could barely see it. All right, and then a little more glue on top of that guy. Kind of flip him over. I don't know if it's gonna land. It's gotta land glitter side up. Shoot. Oh, there we go. We'll go like that and stack that right on top like that. I think I got too much glue in there, but it will dry clear. So I'm going to just walk away and let that dry. I am going to trim this panel down. Now here's the thing though. Look how beautiful this is. Maybe 
May, may, no, see, I think it has to be tall because I really want to incorporate trees like that. And that's one down from a full card panel. So I think that will look nice, right? Because then we're going to have our little Merry Christmas, right? Right in the center. Like that. I get my, my gray hills, get that sort of centered in. And I'm going to cut a little bit off the side here so it will easily fit through my die cut machine. And I'll trim that panel off. Next, we're going to make this a USA2 card. So this is going to be top folding. This is 11 by four and a quarter. So it folds down to be four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Give that a good press. That. And I'm going to actually offset this a little because sometimes that outline on my mat actually throws my eye off. And when I've got a very narrow uh, window in which to work, which is this very, oh, come on now, like that. There we go. So this just has a very small uh, lip. I think I got it on there a little crooked. You know what, I could trim a little bit off and no one would even know. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna come in a hair like that. I'm gonna do it real hard. Like that. That makes me happier. Okay. Gosh, I love card making. Okay. Anyway, I hope this video inspires you to check out the new tools from Waffle Flower, because that's really that's really what it's about, but I, I had to pop a stencil in and make a card, and now I've got yet another holiday card, which makes me happy because I don't do um, mass production of holiday cards. Basically what I do is I'll make a bunch, right, while I'm designing and sharing things on my YouTube channel, and then I have this wonderful, oh, I'm just going to dab some glue here so I can wiggle. Then I have this wonderful mishmash that I mostly just send to my crafty friends because you know they're going to appreciate it, right? It's not that the other family members won't, but I, I think you know. So a little bit of an angle, right? Equal from side to side. And we're going to press that down like that. Oh, I think that's really sweet. Right? Because look at the, look at the little almost bokeh look to the, the flakes on there. I mean, you might think that looks like dirty snow, but I'm going to go with the fact that that is a wintry scene. You can find all the supplies that I used for today's card project linked below my video in the information box. I would love to have you become a subscriber, and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.